and welcome to today's Tuesday tip. As promised, the fourth Tuesday of every month is our question and answer period. The first question that we have is about disposing of an asset for less than fair market value. The writer writes that the grandmother, who is a resident, disposed of an asset by giving her grandson her car. She wants to know if that should be a disposal of an asset for less than fair market value and count it for two years. And the answer is no. The 4350.3 paragraph 5-7A3 states that some belongings of value are not considered as assets. Necessary personal property is not counted as an asset. The car belonged to the grandmother and she used it personally and she gave it to the grandson. That's fine. It's not disposing of an asset for less than fair market value. But great question. The second question is about marijuana whether or not it's legal on hood properties. You know, you walk out, you smell it everywhere you go now. The writer writes, we have a concern about the limits for our complex. We have not seen marijuana, but we have caught the smell in and around the unit. Our house rules state no drugs, but due to the fact that Alabama has decided to allow medical marijuana, how do we handle this situation? Well, a lot of states have medical marijuana laws and medicinal purposes. Now, marijuana is everywhere, but because it's everywhere does not mean that you can use it on a HUD property. We called an account executive from HUD and asked about the question if HUD had changed their minds about the law. She told us no. Federal law supersedes state law, and the federal regulations say no medical marijuana, especially if the property is designed non-smoking, which most of their elderly properties are. So the short answer to the question is no, they're not allowed to utilize it even if they can show proof of a drug card or a card from the doctor it is still not legal on hood properties. The third question is from a resident service coordinator who says that some of the residents have expressed a concern to her about starting a tenant organization. She wants to know if she has to have HUD's approval, if HUD comes out and talks to them, or if we come out to talk to them as the contract administrator, and the answer is no. HUD has given them to right to form a citizen's organization or a tenant organization. So they have that right by HUD. HUD does not have to give you any additional information or permissions. All you have to do is help them to organize it. If we can be of any assistance or point you in the direction for the material that you need, just let us know. Thank you for tuning in today. And I do have a statement that I want to make to our viewing audience. Many of you have requested training from us, and as you know, we have no problem coming out helping you in doing MOR training. But because HOTMA will take effect on January the 1st of 2024, we are advising people to wait until we can get HOTMA training together and then we'll come out and help you because it will do you no good to learn the old rule because the new HOTMA rule is going to change MORs also. So just be patient, tune in to our social media and Tuesday tips and we'll let you know about the HOTMA rules and when we can come back out and start your training. Thank you. See you next time for another Tuesday tip.